What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Now, the Estes Fat Boy is an iconic piece of Estes history, a rocket that's close to my heart because I had one both when I was younger and probably another one about 10 years ago. I've always loved big giant upscales of them, so we're gonna build one. I love this giant gel coat nose cone. It makes me want to build a mosquito this size too, but unfortunately this nose cone is no longer produced. So if I did go the mosquito route, we'd have to paint it whatever color we're painting the fat boy, which is going to be the factory color, so that we can interchange the nose cones between the two. But uh, other than that, pretty standard stuff here. We got a filament wound fiberglass 54 motor millimeter motor mount a standard filament wound seven and a half inch g12 tube and three three sixteenths inch g10 fins that are green which is interesting uh like they're actually colored they're not painted they're colored fiberglass uh which i don't i don't know when this kit was made but i don't know when the manufacturer of these parts started doing that but uh this thing came up for sale for a really good deal on the rocketry forum and uh, you guys know me i don't have enough unfinished and unbuilt rockets so i really was looking for another project but uh i'm an sd sucker and uh one of the big influences other than the gates brothers i've told you guys about was uh, arizona and upscale rocketry is uh, the team name they used to go by and they always built giant sd's rockets so Upscales have been a big part of uh, my rocketry career for a long time, so I'm super, super excited to have this. And for the price it was put up for, I couldn't say no. I had to have it. So we're going to start where we always do with a fiberglass kit, which I'm sure you guys are plenty tired of seeing because that is just sanding everything. Uh, one interesting thing about this kit, though, is it comes with wooden centering rings, which we'll get to here in a little bit. I also want to give a shout out to the guy I bought it from for marking all the fins and the corresponding slots that they fit in easiest. I'm glad I'm not the only crazy one that, that goes to that level of extreme just so that it's easier to put together. But uh, yeah, we're going to start sanding something. And if you're familiar with uh, this era of fiberglass parts, I'm going to show you guys something that will blow your mind. This is only what happened with 7.5 inch stuff with me. It happened with my iris nose cone too. Ready? Watch this. It fits, it goes in, and it comes out. Exotic. Alright, let's sand some stuff. So I had somebody ask me why I use denatured alcohol. If it's any advan if there's any particular advantages to using it instead of just water, because I know a lot of people bathe fiberglass kits. And I still do sometimes if you watch like uh, my Forge Big Daddy build, I bathed all those parts. Um, my only reason for recommending denatured alcohol above traditional isopropyl alcohol like I'm using right now is that it does a great job at breaking down West Systems epoxy where this stuff doesn't. So if you're using West Systems all the time like I do, it's great to have around because you can thin it out and clean it up super easy. And uh, that's actually how my dad and I have been using, well, we just threw them away a couple, I think last year, but we had been using the same syringes for injecting internal fillets for probably at least four or five years because we clean them with denatured alcohol in between sets and it was plenty plenty clean enough to you know not inhibit how the plunger works and everything we got to just reuse it over and over but regular rubbing alcohol like this won't do that for you however the advantage to using it over water still to clean fiberglass parts is that uh, it dries pretty much instantly as you just saw so if you don't want to wait for water to dry um, then use rubbing alcohol and we're back once again to our usual tricks using the fin tab length as a reference for how far apart to put the centering rings now doing this build was a little bit different because I did it a way that I haven't done 
really on this channel other than once a long time ago with my 6 inch Red Max, ironically, another big SD subscale. This kit has three centering rings and I actually only glued one in place before gluing it into the airframe. That's because I was leaving the rear ring removable so that I could reach in there manually and do internal fillets and the front ring removable for future electronics bay advancement that I haven't quite developed yet. However, after getting the motor mount assembly tacked in and preparing to glue the fins to the motor tube, I ran into something I've never seen before. None of the fin tabs reach the motor tube. I know you can probably see, I don't know how well, on camera that uh, there's a little bit of a gap between the fin root and the, uh, the body tube itself. So hopefully uh, just a bunch of sanding and opening those fin slots open a little bit more will give us the clearance we need, but I don't think it's going to based on the fact that the gaps at the motor tube are bigger than the gaps at the airframe. Uh, not only that, but two of these fin slots are drilled in different spots, so this fin's going to sit about a quarter of an inch lower than the other ones. Um, which I imagine might be why one of them has the slot drilled out or cut out further up. Uh, so, yeah. See that? You can see it's touching the airframe tube right there and only just grazing the motor tube. So I had the back ring in there to keep everything straight, but that top ring's dry now, so it's it's not moving around like I can persuade the tube to come this way a little bit if I want to. Where it's at is sitting centered, so uh, yeah. All the fins are consistently, you know, somewhere between a 16th and an eighth of an inch uh, too short on the tabs. So, uh, um, I don't really know what I'm going to do about that just yet. The next day. You know, when you're working on a rocket and things get a little heated and it stops being fun, you should stop working on it. And that's what I did last night. And now that I've slept on it, I've decided how we're going to solve this issue. As you guys know, I like tight fin slots because it helps keep the fin straighter while the glue's drying, but I think that could be a big part of our issue on this particular rocket. So what we're going to do is we're going to sand those fin slots out a little bit, but more importantly, we're going to go out to the belt sander and sand the faces of the fin tabs. Still, it seems like the gap between the motor tube and the fin tab is much bigger than the gap between the airframe and the uh, fin root. So, I don't know, here's hoping that uh, it just, I haven't had a chance to get it to sit all the way flat because the fin slot issue and everything will work out fine. If not, what we're gonna have to do is tactically use the belt sander to basically raise these fin roots up about a 16th of an inch. So just, you know, take this, this belt and whoop, right there, push these up a little bit till they fit. But last night I didn't have a plan or solution at all and now I do. So. Take your time when you do this stuff. <sighs> it's fin slots. Indeed it is my friend, so I took out a, a die grinding bit on my Dremel and sat there one slot at a time with the corresponding fin and just ground things out until I could get stuff to fit all the way through. Eventually it did end up actually coming together. Finally moving on from that disaster, next step in this saga was to drill two holes in the rear centering ring and run a cable through them so after gluing the fins back in place I have a way to easily retrieve the rear ring and open it back up so that I can do internal fillets. Even though the centering ring in the middle of the motor tube is glued in place currently, putting the back ring in just so everything is exactly where it's going to be is good practice, that way you know the motor tube isn't even slightly crooked. 
Now my next step is taking Bob Smith's thick CA and running a thick bead along the roots and the root of the entire tab as well as the edges that are going to be touching the inside of the fin slots and manually lining up the fin. Now this next clip caused quite a controversy recently, but I did want to go out of my way to prove the point that CA is a lot stronger than people give it credit for, because a lot of people have questions whether or not it's actually a good idea to use it to mount fins before doing fillets. Now apparently it needs to be made very clear that that clip is not suggesting that you should build an entire high power rocket with CA and not use epoxy at all. That being said, I do think an all CA built high power rocket could take a pretty powerful motor and that might be something I have to explore in a future video, but for now, we're going to remove that rear centering ring, unleashing Pandora's box of virtually unlimited room for reaching in there and doing internal fillets and my god, it's a beautiful thing quickly cut in with a phone video before you see the outro screen but uh, I decided to go ahead and start the internal and external fillet process. The nice thing is this rocket's got so much room in here that I can just reach in there with a big old popsicle stick. So both the internal and external fillets are West Systems with 206 slow hardener, 406 colloidal silica mixed in them and I'm just doing both internal and external sets at once. Make sure you stay tuned. Uh, don't forget when I hit 10,000 subscribers, I'm giving away a rocket. I think we have only like 300 something to go now. So if you aren't subscribed, make sure you hit that button. It's free. If you want to help support the channel, check out rocketvlogs.com or patreon.com slash rocketvlogs. And I'll see you guys next time.